Uh, Corey Pegues, you know, you have experience with firearms, certainly. Uh, what do you think? Is that a, a possibility? Uh, well, anything is possible, but it, it doesn't seem realistic to me. Uh, with the moving parts, he's hugging her, she pushes him away, she grabs a firearm, and she's going to hold it so far away from her head. It just doesn't happen. I've seen numerous suicides on um, the stippling would be on your head if you had it in close proximity. Uh, I don't know. This is the best that the def uh, the prosecution has. The uh, DA is putting me to sleep. I was yeah. almost asleep. <laughs> uh, he's very mundane, very monotone, uh, but he does come out with some great points. So you have to really, this jury is going to have to really, really pay attention to this district attorney because he's talking very slow. Uh, he's almost putting you to sleep. But he brought up some great points. He was evasive. Uh, Austin was very evasive. Tried to help look for the body, knowing, in fact, he had the body. He took the, the vehicle. He took the gun. And going back to the vehicle, why would someone else burn the vehicle other than him? He's saying that he just dropped the vehicle off. So here I am now. I'm just going to go to a park. I see a vehicle sitting in a park, and I'm just going to torch it. It doesn't really make sense. So there was holes in his story. And now my memory serves me correctly, Julie, going back to this crime um, when we was talking about this case previously. I believe that they had a love affair in high school. They were boyfriend and girlfriend for approximately a year, if my memory serves me correctly. And I think at the time I was theorizing that maybe he was trying to get back with her and she didn't want to get back with him. So he was like a jilted lover. So there's other ways to, you know, to look at this case. Uh, and the more that we look at it, I'm starting to get more memories from the previous trial.